we're going to talk a little bit about how we can check the linearity between numeric x variables and the log odds of the outcome in a logistic regression model. So what we're going to do is first I'm going to explain here on the whiteboard the concept of how we can do it and then we'll look at implementing it for a numeric example on our data set in R. So what I want to say is we can use a very similar approach to how we started when we introduced logistic regression in general. And we made some plots to try and explain what it is we're trying to model. Okay. I also want to make sure the point is clear that we have to check one numeric x variable at a time, and we only need to check the numeric x variables. Okay. Um, we don't assume that categorical variables are linearly related to the log odds. If you remember, categorical variables just give us one estimate. Here's the, the point estimate of the log odds for each category. Right? So there's no linear component to them. So here what I've done is um, put just some generic data down where we have x being a numeric variable. Right? We want to check if that's linearly related to the log odds. So let me just I guess, write that down. Remember we have the log odds of the outcome are b0 plus b1 x1 and so on. Right. So we're, we're assuming that the relationship between numeric x variables and the log odds is the same. So the first thing we can do is think about breaking this into categories. I'm going to break it into four different groups. It's a group one, two, three, four. And let me just add this down. So let me write this down. So we want to divide x, that's a little bit too close, we want to divide x into categories or groups, and I suggest you do three to five groups, and I also suggest that it's based on quantiles. And what I mean by that is here I've broken up into four groups and suggesting that we use say, Q1, the median, and Q3. So the lowest quarter of data, the next lowest quarter, the next quarter, and the top quarter. Right? So breaking into four equal parts, separating them based on um, quantiles. So here I did on quartiles. <clears throat> and the lowest quarter, next quarter, next quarter, highest quarter. Um, and I suggest you need to do it for at least three, no less than three. And I think you don't really want to go beyond five. I think that might be overkill or doing a little bit too much. Then what you're going to do is within each category, Calculate p hat, okay, the probability of the disease. So what I'm saying here is, within category of group one, we'll look at how many people are there, how many have the disease, how many don't, and calculate the proportion within there. Then for category two, again, calculate the proportion. For category three and for category four. So calculate the proportion with the outcome or proportion with the disease in each category. Then calculate the log odds. Take the log of the P over one minus P. And again, if you remember, we assume the relationship between the log odds and the X is linear. So for each of these, we're going to take the log of p over 1 minus p. And so convert them to log odds. And then finally, we're going to plot the log odds. And I'll show this in a minute. The log odds for each um, category or group. versus the median 
okay, or the midpoint of each group or each interval. So let me show you that um, down here. And so here, here's the x that was numeric. Let me just put it into the four groupings again. So here's group one, two, three, and four. <coughs> now what I'm saying is for each of these, Right. We've calculated the log of p over 1 minus p. So rather than keeping it as probability of the outcome, we've converted it to the log odds. And we want to plot that versus roughly what the midpoint is here. Okay, so what I'm suggesting is for <coughs> the value of x, all the people are in this lowest group, calculate the median x value for them. And I'll talk in a minute why I'm saying median rather than midpoint. I'll talk about the slight difference between each of those. So this one here, I'm just going to label it as OD, okay, the log odds. So what we're going to do is first roughly the midpoint, plot what the log odds were for group one. For group two, same thing. We calculate the log odds and plot it versus roughly the midpoint there. For group three, again, the log odds versus the midpoint. And for group four. Now, the reason I'm saying, I'm suggesting for these using the median rather than the midpoint is just suppose that here's the values of x, there's one person sitting way out here. Okay, there's one more person at a really high x value. What that's going to do, if you take the midpoint, it might pull the midpoint a little bit higher and it might stretch this a bit further over. Okay, so I think it's a little bit safer to use the medians of all the x values within each of these groups. But it's not going to be a big difference either way. And now, I guess I'll write this down. This plot here, the points should fall roughly on a line if the relationship is linear. So these points should fall approximately on a line if the relationship between the numeric x and the log odds is linear. Because you can see here what we've done is we've created a plot. We're plotting x versus the, let me just write that down, the log odds, or the log of p over 1 minus p. Okay, so this is a way we can check does the relationship between a numeric x and the log odds of the outcome appear to be approximately linear? Now, the reason why I said we need to choose uh, this system, minimum three, three groups is if you choose just two groups, two points always fall on any line, right? If you have three points, the chance of them falling on a line randomly is, much, is lower, right? Obviously, two points will always fall on a line. The chance of having four points fall in a line randomly is going to be quite low. Um, and like I said, I think you can go as high as five based breaking the data into um, quintiles, but you probably don't want to go beyond um, having more than five groups. So this is the kind of conceptual explanation of how we can get to checking linearity. What we're going to do now is look at our data set and going into R and examining the linearity between a numeric variable and the log odds of the outcome. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.